शुक्लांबरधर विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदन ध्यानोपात दोर्भेरुक्ता चतुर्भ स्फटिकमणिमयी अक्षमाला दधाना हस्ते नैक पद्म सीतमी चशुक पुस्तक चापरेण कूजतमेति मधुर मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकिकोकिल वाकर्मुनिंह से कविता वनचारिण शृण्वन राम कथाथ कोनयादिपरा गति गोष्पदीतवाशिम मशकीकृतराक्षसम रायण महामारत्न वंदे नीलात्मज अंजना यघुनाथ कीर्तन त्र तृतमस्तकांजलि बाष्पवारी परिपूर्णलोचन मारुति नमत राक्षसातक वैदेही सहित सुरद्रुमतने हईमे महामंटपे मध्ये पुष्पकमासने मणिमये वीरासने सुस्थित अग्रे वाचयते प्रभंजन सुते तत्व मुनेभ्य परम व्याख्या भरतादिभ्य परिवृत राम भजे श्यामल नमोस्तु राय सलक्ष्मणाय दै चनकात्मज नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रय मनिभ्य नमोस्तु चंद्रार्कमुद्गणेभ्य ओके सो विल कंटिन्यू सो वीवर ऑन बालकांड सो बालकांड यू रिमेम्बर वी हेड सी इन टिल विश्वामित्र Vishwamitra taking both the boys to their hermitage. That is Sarga twen- uh, along with him. Sorry, to his hermitage he takes both the boys, Rama and Lakshmana. Dasharatha was a bit reluctant, but after Vasishtha's advice, he agrees to leave Rama along with Vishwamitra. Obviously, Lakshmana also follows with them. Next, what happens? Let us see. Sarga twenty three Balakandam. Now the night is done. This. वेरी वेरी ऑस्पिशियस वर्स फर्स्ट वर्ड्स ऑफ वेंकटेश्वर सुप्रभात कौसल्या सुप्रजा राम पूर्वा संध्या प्रवर्त उत्तिष्टन रूल कर्तव्य दैव विश्वामित्र टॉक्स अबाउट कौशल्या सुप्रजा अगेन ही रेफर्स और ही कॉल्स आउट टू राम एज अ सन ऑफ कौशल्या वाई सो वाई डज ही डज नॉट कॉल दशरथ नंदना Or through some other name, he could have called Rama only. Kausalya Supraja. This is a respect to one's mother. If not for Kausalya, the world would never be blessed with Rama. The child would have never been born. So therefore, paying respect to Kausalya. That is the reason why Vishwamitra mentions here Kausalya Supraja. Supraja, one who makes. You can say one who makes the face of Kausalya very happy, or one who makes the entire world happy. राम पूर्वा संध्या प्रवर्त पूर्वा संध्या संध्या इवनिंग पूर्वा द टाइम बिफोर इवनिंग दट इज द डे टाइम डे हेज ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड डे हेज ऑलरेडी डॉन प्लीज गेटअप नाउ उत्तिष्ट गेटअप नरशार धूल लायन अमंग मेन इट्स अ ग्रेट मैन बेस्ट अमंग मेन कर्तव्य दैव मनिकम लॉट ऑफ कर्तव्य लॉट ऑफ रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज आर टू बी डन प्लीज वेकअप सो दैट यू कैन डू ऑल योर डेली एब्ल्यूशन so this is the gist of uh, like only one verse mainly is there in sarga 23 which is very very important the gist of sarga 23 if you sorry ha 23 correct so then they visit now about this story i will tell you little now rama and lakshmana they go along with vishwamitra rama gets up in the morning and then uh, there is a hermitage that is there of a person called kama now who is this kama Now Kama mainly he was a person who was a great devotee of Lord Shiva, and later what happens is in the course of time, uh, how <coughs> it is said that while he was doing some ablutions or so, 
uh, in the course of time he committed a bit of sins and now unknowingly just as all of us also though we will be 90% good but still there will be a few flaws from in within us also so that was where little even this karma also had got a bit distracted and that's when uh, was it, uh, it is said that Shiva himself had come there and almost he had burnt karma so that is what is the story that goes about so mainly these are all stories of great uh, sages and at the same time uh, people how they got uh, like why a hermitage has been built there what was the significance and so on so they are all small characters in the Ramayana not to um, not of much detail you need not know about them it's not very in detail also of karma also if you look at in the Sarga 22 of the Ramayana you will find that there is not much information that has been done just a normal hermitage and then there are folklores that go about saying that he was burnt by karma and so on so this is the significance further now here some people what they consider is though karma is the name of a person karma is a uh, story it is said that this karma who is there he is actually karma deva himself karma deva is a god of love or you can say lust destruction and so on so therefore some people also consider that just as Kama has to be, uh, Kama Deva has to be, uh, you can uh, now how to consider for this. Mm. Now, Kama, we have four Purusharthas Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. All of these are very, very important. First is Dharma, then you have Artha. Dharma is righteousness. Next is Artha, we need wealth to survive. Kama, there should be desires. Only if you have some desires and passion, you can lead a good life and ultimately moksha. So these are four purusharthas. Here in this reference, this Kama is also referred to as Kama Deva. So how Kama Deva was burnt by Lord Shiva. So when you, as we know, the story goes, when Shiva was doing a lot of tapasya, Kama Deva now. The form of Kama, the Kama Deva is a form of love, right? Is a god of love. So just looking at him, he will be very attractive. He left floral arrows with him. His arrows are full of flowers. So mainly full of love you can consider looking at the person only people will fall in love so like this Kamadeva comes and he tries to distract Lord Shiva and immediately he was burned down by the third eye of Lord Shiva so this is and in his praise where all this took place that is where this hermitage of Kamadeva has been built so Rama and Lakshmana see that between the rivers of Sarayu and Ganga Vishwamitra tells them the story how Kamadeva was burnt by Lord Shiva this was a place where all these incidents took place and now a few sages are living in this uh, hermitage you can just go and visit them further Sarga 24 finally the killing of Tataka the story of Tataka has been told Tasya Yamatula Shabdaha Jandhavi Mabivartate Vadi Samksho Bajo Rama Pranamam Niyataf Kuru so Vishwamitra tells Rama that whenever there is a confluence, whenever there is the joining of two rivers, you must always worship them. Because it was a place wherein the rivers Sarayu and Ganga were meeting each other. Just as you have the Triveni Sangama, right? Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, they meet each other. Or you have the uh, Ganga and Yamuna meeting, you have the Alaknanda. You can, if you have seen those pictures where people have actually visited, I think you can even see the change in the color of the water, right? So such places wherein two or three rivers meet, that's called the Sangama. And that's a very auspicious place wherein uh, you go there, you take a bath. So a very auspicious uh, place. Usually it will be on the banks of some temple or banks of a river. It will be situated near a temple or a good pilgrimage place and so on. So like this, this Ganga and Sarayu, they meet and Vishwamitra tells Rama that you have to offer pranams here. Tapyam tuta vubau kratwa pranama mati dharmika tiram dakshanama sadhya jagmatur lagu vikrama. Both of them they worship the river and they moved further. Now Tataka and Maricha, and now here finally Ramata Vishwamitra tells that now the main purpose of why I have bought you, I am going to tell you now. Meaning there are a few asuras here, Tataka, and she is the wife of a demon called Sunda. So she is the one. She is actually a Yakshini. Yakshini in the sense we have demigods, Apsaras, Yakshas, Kandarvas, Chitraratas, and so on. So like this, due to a curse, she is a female Yakshini who's been born due to a curse as a Rakshasi, as a demoness. So you have to give her sharp moksha only, then she'll be freed from her world, freed from her uh, curse, and at the same time the world will be freed by her Rakshasic powers. So 
कस्यचिवतकालीवैकामे बल नागसहस्र धारयती तदाह्यभूत बल नागसहस्र नाग नागा सर्पंट स्नेक्स शी हेज गॉड द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ अबाउट सहस्रम ऑफ अ थाउजेंड स्नेक्स ताटकाद्रम ते भार्य सुंदर से धीमत मारीचो राक्षस पुत्र यशक्रपराक्रम सो शी इज द वाइफ ऑफ दिस पर्सन कॉल सुंड दे हेव अ सन नौ यल नागसहस्र यर इन द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ यू सी इट इज गिवेन एज एलिफेंट्स so this both the meanings you can make about because now elephants will be in case of physical strength so in that meaning you can consider but in the case case of snakes why it is mentioned as naga now naga is another word for elephants in the amarakosha now naga why you can consider it as snakes to be in some references it is so reason being now snakes though the physical form of strength the physical uh, structure of snake is not like it will be very strong or so but the poison that it emits it will kill people right so though she possessed a lot of physical strength she was she was also very shrewd and cunning at the same time just like a snake can emit poison similarly she was very very dangerous so in this context of course you can consider the meaning as elephant but for your knowledge not only here but in many contexts if only the word naga is comes in which meaning should i take so for that of course you can read the commentaries and see which meaning you can consider but secondly be very very careful because it can both the meanings can apply here because she had the physical strength like an elephant like thousand elephants at the same time she was she was very shrewd and cunning like a poisonous snake also whichever meaning you want you can take it for now we can consider elephants so this woman the wife of sunda who had the strength of a thousand elephant she had a rakshasa called maricha who had the power of lord indra only later maricha is also going to be defeated by rama next sarga Vishwamitra tells Rama, "You have to slay Tataka." Rama had learned not to kill a woman. So then, Rama questions. Rama becomes hesitant. He says, "How can I kill a woman?" At that time, Vishwamitra gives an explanation. नहिते स्त्री वृते घृणाकारोत्तम चातुर्वर्णिताय कर्तव्य राजसूनुना यर वॉट विश्वामित्रा टेल्स इस नाउ यू लुक एट द नेक्स्ट वर्ड्स नृशम सम नृशम सं वजा रक्षण कारण पातक वोषम व कर्तव्य रक्षता सता फॉर अ क्षत्रिय और फॉर अ पर्सन डूइंग वंस ओन डीड इट इज डूइंग वंस ओन ड्यूटी दैट इज टू टेक केयर ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट्स टेक केयर ऑफ द पीपल प्रोटेक्ट द पीपल दैट इज वंस ओन मेन ड्यूटी सो there we must not think about other dharmas laws and so on now if you see rama avatara so this is a difference again between rama avatara and krishna avatara krishna avatara he knew very well and that is the reason why vishnu when he took the krishna avatara he was very clear in his approach he told arjuna that do the gita if you see arjuna when he was confused saying that how can i kill my own relations how can i fight with my own teachers and so on at that time krishna directly says that if there is no other way we have to also change our ways we have tried our level best but nothing is working out at the same time when you have a doubt of killing your own acharyas gurus teachers and so on if they are supporting adharma that is their way of life that is their outlook that doesn't mean that just because someone is a teacher even they do even if they support someone evil you cannot go and do that you cannot not kill them just because they are your teachers and so on so at that time for a kshatriya relationships do not matter you must follow your dharma only this is one explanation same thing vishwamitra tells rama but the only difference is in the krishna avatara krishna himself knows this but in the rama avatara rama it's not that rama did not know this but rama had assumed the form of a man naravatara krishna had also assumed the form of a man but he wanted to show his divinity also that is the reason right from the time he was born he showed divine powers and everyone right during the krishna avatara days knew that krishna was lord himself whereas rama avatara only later people could know only a few people could make out that rama was god because rama stuck to all the orders stuck to dharma for him maryada or for him dharma dharma you can say maryada purushottama and so on why such names are called for rama because he was the one who stick to the 
you you can say he was very stringent he used to follow dharma like anything for him there was nothing beyond dharma so what the society says or maybe he lost in many aspects like for example he had to be he had to be separated from his wife so many times or he went to the forest and he suffered even though he knew that he was not wrong anyway so he could not fight for himself under the name of dharma so therefore vishnu on his next avatar or decides that and he comes to know now till the treta satya yuga everything was good there was only positivity everywhere treta yuga slowly negative elements like ravana kumbhakarna and so on started coming in but still rama stuck to dharma sticking to dharma he did whatever he could next avatar vishnu felt that sticking to dharma and everything is fine but then if the world doesn't listen we have to also change our ways so that's the reason in dwapar yuga when vishnu took an incarnation of krishna he advises the geeta to arjuna and slowly little rules he starts breaking krishna was born to break rules as we know and kali yuga ultimately today we see 90% are all crooked ways 10% is wherein a person can be very very straight forward right and if you are not crooked if you are not cruel if you are not shrewd the world doesn't work at all right that doesn't mean that we become rude and cruel but then you cannot always be very straight forward or you, you are very simple and so on then the world takes advantage of you that is what we can see around in the kali yuga so slowly as time changed all this was seen slowly it was developing right from the treta yuga and became more in dwapara yuga and kali yuga it is at its peak so therefore krishna's mindset changed so here krishna so the, the point here that i am telling you is rama needed vishwamitra to tell him because rama was a learner of dharma he said no i cannot kill a woman as per dharma i want to not kill a woman so therefore this ra- doubt rises in his mind whereas if this had taken place in krishna avatar krishna will never ask even he would have killed a woman directly because he knew what is correct so uh, this is one explanation second explanation to this is when we talk so much about dharma so under the name of chaturvanya that is under the name of uh, we be following what is right for you can we you can say break the rules of dharma now if you see morally it is not right to kill a woman right but then here vishwamitra tells that being a kshatriya your first duty is to protect your subjects so if someone is causing you harm you must kill it away so then breaking one rule in order to you can say establish some other duty is it right that what do you feel about this anyone like one rule has to be broken one dharma is killing a woman he is breaking this rule in order to save his kshatriya dharma is was this correct or is this wrong anyone this correct or wrong it is correct. correct okay it is correct and wrong it's only the perception perception okay so here now for this there is a very simple explanation you can still have people who come and argue we ourselves might feel this why so is it so that for making one dharma correct or for fulfilling one duty is it always needed to break another dharma like here for establishing kshatriya dharma vishwamitra tells your first duty is to take care of your subjects but for that reason you have to break a rule right you have to break a dharma that a woman has to be killed so basically if you say to achieve something you have to maybe not follow something else can't we do things by following everything rightly here for this there is an explanation vishwamitra further gives him a very deep explanation he says that well, according to you yes it is very much correct that a woman should not be killed but for that reason that woman also should have those qualities right the woman she herself is behaving not like a woman at all if she behaves like a normal woman you need not kill her so therefore don't worry she is not a woman at all she is a rakshasi dosh by birth she is a woman doesn't mean that she has got the qualities of a woman if you are going and killing a normal woman that is adharma but here she is having rakshasic qualities she is gobbling and eating up sages this these are not qualities of a man or woman these are not qualities of a normal person therefore you have full right to kill the woman so here make a note that we should not feel why i am telling you this is we should not feel that to do some one thing we can break the rules of another it's not like that but then or even in the case of krishna also when he tells the geeta when he says follow dharma tomorrow people will come and argue is it okay to kill my own relations and oh i have some argument with my father i'll go and kill him tomorrow has that happened we don't do that right so i have some argument with my so called cousin or so tomorrow we'll go and have a fight with him it is not like that but then krishna what he tries to say is when the opposite person like for example in the case of the mahabharata if you take duryodhana arjuna is wailing that he is my cousin brother dronacharya say he is my teacher bhishma is like my grandfather and so on he is sitting and wailing but then krishna says that you have tried your level best 
first level we have tried our level best in this case also tataka was many times she was uh, told by the sages also they had tried their level best nothing was being worked about so then krishna he tells in the mahabharata again that he tells arjuna you have tried everything i myself went as a shanti duta there also i gave them an option what you want you want narayana myself or you want my narayani sena duryodhana chose them over me pandavas had given both the options to kauravas and they decided that whatever the kauravas choose the remaining you will choose krishna tells you have suffered so much you went 13 years 12 years in vanavasa 13th year there you lost your wife draupadi in front of you having five husbands you could not help her so much of disgrace you have faced in spite of that still you are waiting for your cousins relationships and so on what uses this forget about all the philosophy and everything only soul is there body uh, body is temporary and so on the teachings of the gita you can keep aside for a minute but logically if you think krishna he gives only one message saying that you have tried your level best you have suffered a lot you have tolerated a lot if the opposite person if you are waiting for duryodhana saying that he is your cousin brother does he have the same feelings for you he is not thinking about that right he is going out of the way and though you are his brother you you pandavas are also his cousins and so on he is not thinking that way dronacharya is your guru in fact he was your favorite guru right ekalavya who came there dronacharya to say, learn from him he showed him a way saying that no i want only arjuna he did not teach karna so many people are there but for you he always supported now at the time of war at the time of need when your lives are in danger nobody is there to support you so when they are going on the path of adharma we must never think now here again don't have this doubt that oh someone does bad should i also do the same thing should we have this strict for that mentality is not like that first is in whichever dharma we are born we must follow that born or rather which we follow in the case of arjuna or in the case of the pandavas they had tried their level best but when nothing worked out you have to always think as a kshatriya because your first tool is to save your subjects and think about their welfare therefore fighting the war is very very important in this context again shamitra he tells that killing a woman is absolutely wrong but then the woman is not having those woman qualities and if she is a burden to the world your duty as a kshatriya is to get rid of her so it is absolutely correct on your part to kill the ataka so this is explanation that he gives now note about all these things there will be lot of arguments how can someone come and kill you should have the proper interpretation why something is done okay so here he in verse number 17 if you see nrasham samanrasham samva says that whether cruel kind sinful whatever you do for the protection of the subjects a king should do whatever he can because that is kshatriya dharma you are born in the lineage of kshatriyas a great lineage that to avikshwa ko vamsha your first duty is to kill your subjects uh, sorry first duty is to protect your subjects फॉलो वॉट शुड डू दे there are two kinds of dharmas samanya dharmam vishesha dharma samanya dharmam is the general laws that we follow obey your parents obey your teachers take care of your relatives and so on vishesha dharmam is knowing what is right what is wrong for this the best example is of prahlada respecting one's father is samanya dharma but for a child like prahlada if he had respected and listened to his father hiranyakashipu it would have brought the end of not only himself but of the entire world ultimately So, विशेष धर्म में ही हैड रिस्पेक्ट टूवर्ड्स इज फादर बट ऑब्वियसली ही डिड नॉट लाइक हिरण्य कशिपो टोल्ड हिम स्टार्ट स्टॉप वर्शिपिंग विष्णु स्टार्ट हिरण्याय नम स्टार्ट माय वर्शिप प्रहलादा डिड नॉट डू दैट ही फॉलोड विशेष धर्म ही रिस्पेक्टेड इज फादर ही न्यू व्हाट इज सामान्य धर्म बट जस्ट फॉर द सेक ऑफ फॉलोइंग सामान्य धर्म ही कैन नॉट सेट एंड वर्शिप हिरण्य कशिपो इंस्टेड ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु राइट so therefore at this is vishesh dharma knowing what is right just because a person has got this tag that he is related to me he is my father and he can do anything he is such an evil man i cannot go and sit and worship him so this is vishesh dharma so there can be even in our lives also there can be situations wherein this is called dharma sankatam dharma sankatam meaning confusions what should i do very simple example when we celebrate a few festivals also 
मेनी ऑफ अस वी हैव दिस कंफ्यूजन राइट और इवन सिंपल एकादशी टुडे इज एकादशी और टुमारो इज एकादशी और टुडे षष्टी टुमारो षष्टी वी आस्क राइट दस टेन पीपल टेन पीपल विल गिव यू टेन डिफरेंट आंसर दिस इज धर्म संकटम वॉट शुड आई फॉलो शुड आई फॉलो दिस शुड आई फॉलो दैट बोथ आर करेक्ट नथिंग कैन बी डिक्लाइन बट एट दैट टाइम वॉट शुड बी डन इज what is most appropriate in that situation that is what should be followed so under the name of samanya dharma it is very very wrong saying that no one should respect one's father one should respect one's mother but if they are not fit to be a good father or good mother you should never do that because now people like you and me are not appropriate to decide whether a person is good or bad of course in the case of pralada rama krishna and so on they were great people great devotees so they could make up what it is so therefore when such topics come in we have to be very very smart in dealing you have to think properly you should have proper answers there should be no place for confusion okay so did everyone understand till here uh, yes. yes 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 okay so why on some topics i give you a detailed explanation is there should be no place for doubt at all rama killed a woman is that okay or there will be people coming and asking you also so a proper answer should be given again though we are not answerable to anyone for our own self for our own satisfaction there should be a very very practical answer which is there and this shows that how authentic ramayana is till date you don't have something oh something many years back valmiki has written but today i cannot make out what it is very much applicable till date but the way we interpret is very very important if you take it in the wrong way then everything will change so interpretation is very very important next शूयते हि पुरा शक्र विरोचन सुता नृप पृथ्वी हंतुमिछंते मंथरामभ्यसूदयत सो नाउ विश्वामित्र गिव्स सम एग्जांपल्स एंड ही सेज दैट यू आर नॉट द ओनली वन हु इज डूइंग दिस अर्लियर इंद्र हैड आल्सो किल्ड अ वुमन कॉल्ड मंथरा शी वाज विरोचनास डॉटर प्रहलादा सन विरोचना इज डॉटर शी हैड ट्राइड टू डिस्ट्रॉय द अर्थ सो द ऑपोजिट पर्सन फॉलोस अधर्मा देयर इज नो अदर ऑप्शन यू हैव ट्राइड योर लेवल बेस्ट So, in order to save the world, you have to also change your ways. You have to mend your ways. Vishnu na api pura Rama, Bhagu patni drada vrata, anedram loka mechanti ka vyamata nishudita. Again earlier, the mother of Kavya, that is Bhagu's wife, she was also destroyed by Vishnu because she tried to make the world without Indra. That is, <coughs> sorry, without the king of God. <coughs> she came to destroy indra heaven and so on so at that time even vishnu also had killed rama killed a woman so there are many instances like this so so finally now rama is convinced he decides to kill tataka so now here rama he still takes like a pledge he takes anushishto smyayodhyayam guru madhye mahatmana <coughs> sorry पिता दशरथेना ब्रह्मवादि करिष्यामि न संदेहः ताटका वदमुत्तम सो एज पर द वर्ड्स ऑफ माय फादर द कमांड ऑफ विश्वामित्रा हु हैज स्टडीड हु नो व्हाट इज द सुप्रीम ब्रह्म आई एम गोइंग टू फाइनली किल दिस डेमन ताटका यूजिंग द पावर्स दैट आई हैव गॉट गो ब्राह्मण हितार्थाय देशस्यास्य सुखाय च तव चैव प्रमेयस्य वचनं कर्तमुद्यतः for the welfare of cows now please note that go right from the ramayana times today we have concepts of go puja or you have uh, concepts of worshiping the cow or why cow is considered to be a very very holy animal without the cow most of us we cannot survive all the things that we get from a cow uh, we consume in our everyday life more than that cow is considered to be a form of goddess mahalakshmi herself so therefore cow this concept or the 
auspiciousness that is associated with a cow is there right from the Ramayana times or even quite before that. So here also Rama tells the same thing that for the welfare of cows, Brahmins and all the people who are there, I am going to take this act and for the good of the country in general, for all the sages so that they are not disturbed in their sacrifices, I am going to kill this demon Tataka. Next Sarga, Vishwamitra gives some weapons to Rama because he knew that later, now different types of weapons, later he knew that when Rama is going to face other demons like Hara, Dushana, Ravana, Kumbhakarna and so on, he will need all those weapons so he blesses him with a lot of weapons. Different types of chakras and astras, then Modaki, Shrikari, unique weapons Kalapasha, Varunapasha, Varunapasha is water, Kalapasha time that is death. Varuna Pasha is a person is attacked using Varuna that is water will be splashed. Shushka, Ardra, Vajra they are all types of Vajra that is thunderbolt. Next is Nandana. Nandana is a sword. Two favored weapons Gandharvastra, Manavastra. So these are all names of different weapons if you see. Further Astra Prayoga. Now giving weapons is not enough. How they should be used that is also very much needed at the right time the right weapon should be used this knowledge was given by, to Rama by Vishwamitra Ramam Pranjanayo Bhutva Abhravan Madura Bhashinaha Imesma Narashardula Shadikim Karavamate so basically the first step is Vishwamitra tells that whenever you want to use any Astra you have to invoke the respective deities for example, if it is Varuna Pasha, the presiding deity over there is Varuna. So you have to pray to Lord Varuna, only then that Astra will be of use. So Rama prays to all the gods and at that time, all the Astra Devatas, they come there and they ask Rama, what should we do for you? Manasavkaya Kaleshu Sahayam Me Karishyata Gamyata Mititanaha Yatheshtam Raghunandanaha Rama said that, all of you now, you stay in my mind. Whenever I need you, I will remember you. At that time, you can come and help me. Without me calling you, you need not come. For now, you be there in my mind. So that whenever needed, I can call you. Next verse. Next Sarga is Sarga 29. Now next is story of Siddhashrama. Now what exactly is Siddhashrama? Let's have a look. Now some stories now in the Ramayana will not always directly be related to Rama. So here if you see a little gist of Vamanavatara has been told in the Ramayana that is Sarga 20 9, right? The Sarga is 29. Yes. Story of Siddhashrama. So, in just I will tell you about this and then we can continue. Just one second. Yeah. So, here basically now Vamana Avatara has taken place before Rama Avatara. So, in the current forest where they were now, Vishwamitra tells that this is a place where Vamana had come earlier uh, incarnation of Vishnu and so on. Now, would it be that Rama does not know? Rama is also Vishnu himself, right? But for now, he is Rama who has assumed the form of a Nara, of a man. So therefore, he does not think about his previous avatars. So therefore, Vishwamitra is telling him freshly that here is where Vamana had taken an incarnation. He is also the form of Lord Vishnu. How Maha Chakravarti Mahabali, he was given uh, moksha here. Moksha, rather than moksha, you can say, he was blessed here. He knew what is right and wrong. This Mahabali, he is a grandson of Prahlada. Prahlada's son was Virochana. His son is Mahabali and so on. So the entire story of Vamanavatara has been told here in this Sarka. So that was because and that place where they were visiting in that hermitage after they are crossed about after all the astras were being given it was a place where Vamana Avatara had taken place so therefore Vishwamitra tells him about the story of Vamana how Vishnu was born to Kashyapa and Aditi in the form of a small dwarf boy so that he can save the world and mainly this Siddhashrama is a place where Vamana Avatara takes place so that is the reason why Vishwamitra tells about this story to Rama now how these princes they used to spend their days so the importance of Nitya Karma or Nitya Anushtana. 
ಉಷಿತ್ವಾಸುಮಾಹಿತೌಪ್ರಭಾತಕಾಲೇಚೋತ್ತಾಯೂರ್ವಾಂಸಂಧ್ಯಾಮುಪಾಸ್ಯಪ
Ramanama also could not come to his mouth. So at that time Narada told him the opposite, you keep chanting Mara 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 Mara, it will ultimately become Rama. He started doing Rama Nama Japa. So mainly this concept of Japa came in wherein even if people don't know anything, you don't know some great stotras, you don't know, you don't have much knowledge, at least chanting the names of the Lord should be very very helpful. Secondly, the benefit is you develop some concentration in the mind also. If you want, you can keep a Japa Mala to maintain the count or you can even have some just normal uh, hand counts that we keep. That is also fine. But doing some kind of Japa is always uh, advisable. So the thing is, uh, maybe every you do the same Japa every day or maybe depending on the days you do some kind of Japa that is also there. For example now, uh, Kamala Ji says she does Namah Shivaya. So maybe on every Monday you can chant 108 times Om Namah Shivaya. On every Tuesday you can chant Om Ganganapati and Maha. Wednesday Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Thursday Om Namo Narayanaya or the other way around. Wednesday Om Namo Narayanaya. Thursday Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Friday Shri Matre and Maha. Saturday Ramanama. Sunday you have the 12 names. Any one name you can chant Mitra and Maha, Ravai and Maha, Surya and Maha. All this can be done. 108 times also is not necessary. 11 times, 21 times, 3 times, 5 times, 51 times, 108 times or any time. Even 64, 32, all this also can be done like the Gayatri Mantra Chama. Now these are all just suggestions. The point that I am trying to say is I am not telling that everyone should start those who are not doing it. But then doing Japa also, many people do not know about this. Right from the Ramayana times also it is mentioned and this is the reason why here in the Nitya Anushtana, those who follow, why it is mentioned separately after Sandhya Vandana, he used, they used to do their Japa and then they used to fall at the feet of Vishwamitra. So doing some kind of Japa is important. So always note that Japam is very very important, merely chanting the names of the Lord. You will find it very easy and it, is, it will just take hardly one minute right, to chant Rama 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 Rama. Just count and see in one minute how many names you can chant. Right? So this is something which is, uh, these are all good practices which we can develop as daily habits. It does not take much of a time. At the same time, you don't need a book. Even when you are traveling and so on, also you can do, okay, I don't have a book, what will I chant and so on. Plus, at the same time, it becomes a daily practice. If you chant it with full, your mind and so on, you develop good concentration also. Yeah, continue. Krishna, I'm going to share you that uh, uh, there is one Sanskrit word, Sanskrit word, that page in the Sandhya Mantram. Okay. It is actually that Mukta Vidruma only, it's the last line of Mukta Vidruma of that sloka before you start the Before you use that. Okay, thank you. Ah, yes, Indraji. Uh, every time chanting uh, Lord Surya's name 11, 11 times, uh, is it correct? 11 times? Om Adityaya Namaha Slanda Garbaya Namaha like that. Every time chanting in the morning, is it also correct? Huh. That is also correct, but then uh, 11 times, why 11 times? I don't know. Yeah, for Surya, it should be 12 times. Okay, 12. Okay. Uh, 12 uh, Namaskaras. For Surya uh, Deva, it should be 12. Okay. Yeah. 11 usually it is standard for any Nama but in the case of Surya because we have the 12 Surya Namaskaras it should be 12. Okay. Okay. Let's continue. So, Danyavada. So, the point that what you are I am trying to tell is even and why is there so much of importance? So, you will be sitting and wondering right why so much of importance is given to all this Nitya Karma and why it has been mentioned here? It seems that even in the Srimad Bhagavatam Krishna Neela stories also if you read Krishna after doing his Nitya Karma, it seems that he used to worship Lord Krishna only and an image of himself, image of Vishnu. Krishna Avatara, though he is a form of Krishna, he used to worship one form of another Krishna. That is the same Krishna that we find in Lord Guruvayu. So the Lord of Guruvayu today has been worshipped, that image, that idol has been worshipped by Lord Krishna also. Now here it's not any pride or he felt very proud that he is great that he worshipped himself. There is no power beyond Krishna, right? or beyond the Lord of the universe. There is nothing greater than the Lord. So therefore, what will he worship? But still he had worshipped that. Still he used to do his Nitya Karma. So the point out of this, what is being said is, you, for normal human beings, we must surely do that when the Lords themselves also did their Nitya Karma, did their Japa, did their Anushtana, did their worships and so on. They knew, in the case of Krishna Avatara, he knew he was the Lord himself. Still he had his practice of worship, still he did his Nitya Anushtana. Now in the case of God, he can also wonder, right, who is going to bless me? At least in the case of all of us, oh, I am doing my Nitya Karma every day, I am going to temples, I am doing my worship, surely the Lord will bless me. All my wishes will be fulfilled. We have some selfish uh, attitude there. But for the God, who is going to bless him? He only has to bless himself, right? And he has got everything, there is nothing to bless him. 
still for in fact if you see the lord in all the stories it can be for yourself you can check in the ramayana also it is mentioned you will wonder right why the lord needs to do everything whom is he going to please in this case maybe you will get an answer he wants to please vishwamitra but beyond that if you see krishna also used to worship rama also used to do their nitya karma gods also in all their avatars used to do their nitya karma used to do their puja used to do their worship and so on so that they also believed in this philosophy practice what you preach they themselves did because they knew that if i do today only then the future generation will be doing that so therefore whenever we have this question why am i doing this you don't need any other explanation you don't need any other proofs for that only answer is the lords themselves have done their nitya anushtana this itself should prove why there is so much of importance so when we skip our nitya anushtanam when we skip our daily practices of worship and so on we ourselves are ignorant for that if the lord themselves have done these practices they themselves have worshiped and done these rituals and so on that itself shows the importance of these rituals and when we are not doing that it is our own ignorance so those who are not doing it you must start from today there is never a time to say that okay now basic example i give you of correct yes japa yoga i have read this book japa yoga very good book by swami shivananda as abhilasha ji says it's a very good book again of japa yoga so and mainly why we must follow japa yoga is all other kinds of yoga it is very difficult for us to follow even hatha yoga for that matter hatha yoga is a physical asana maybe you can do padmasana vajrasana beyond that it becomes very difficult that also becomes very difficult now people cannot sit on the floor also so then the least that we can do is japa yoga japa even today now because the reference that she gives abhilasha ji if you go to the swami shivananda ashram it's in rishikesh uttarakhand there even till date Swami Shivananda passed away in the year 1963. If you calculate the days now, calculate the years now, almost 60 years. This year it will be 60, right? But then the karma that they do, the all the traditions that they follow, every night in the evening they have a satsanga there, wherein they keep chanting the names of the Lord. They start from Jai Ganesha, Jai Ganesha, Jai Ganesha, Pa Himam, Shri Ganesha, Shri Ganesha, Shri Ganesha, Rakshama. starting from this simple mantras has anyone visited this ashrama swami shivananda ashrama rishikesh delhi yes yes um uh, you have I, visited I, right have you yes, heard I, the satsanga there i have i was there for about 3 days ha huh. so have you shivananda seen the satsanga there yeah. you have heard the satsanga there yeah, yeah yes yeah, yeah. so yeah okay yeah. 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 it is very nice correct yeah. and yeah. that too if you see now there how they will do the satsanga they start evening they start at 7:30 they will end at 9 and they have a fixed time for it. i'm just giving you one example now all this will be taking place in many other places whichever i have seen i'm telling you 7:30 till about 8 they have the practice of chanting this nama first it starts with this nama japa yoga nama japa then they will chant one chapter of the gita every day 1 2 3 4 like this then they have a few shlokas like the shri sukta that is being chanted then the shaneshwara stotram that is being chanted so by 8 o'clock they complete this 8 o'clock onwards every day they invite the residents who are there the so called sanyasi uh, so called devotees also come there and all the sanyasis are inhabitants of those ashrama one by one they come there and they give discourses on different topics it will be about till 8:45 is everything is time bound you don't have to sit for a long time on different topics one day it will be ramayana one day it will be just mere yoga one day it will be only nama like for example every saturday they have the practice of chanting hanuman chalisa sankata mochana stotra and so on so there be no discourse that day 8:45 you have the aarti also sometimes there some devotees come there they sing some songs or they chant some shlokas and so on that will be till 9 9 o'clock you have the aarti you have the concluding aarti concluding part prasada that's done so 9 9 10 again you go back again in the morning at 4 or so they have their practices so the point is you don't have to put in a lot of efforts to do japa yoga or to do our nitya anushtana and so on it doesn't take a lot of time only thing is we are not ready to do that there are easy practices which have been told and there are people till date who are doing and following all this in different parts of the world you go to ramana ashrama best example ramana ashrama morning and evening every day i think it's about 8:30 to 9 in the morning i don't remember the time exactly evening i think it is 5 to 5:30 or so you have the veda japa that is done and then you have the veda mantra veda chanting that is done and then you have the upadesha sar composed by ramana maharshi only that is chanted so again there it's not that you go to these the point i'm giving you example of these ashramas is 
when you go and visit these ashramas also it's not that oh i visited an ashrama full day i have to go and sit and do japa i don't have anything more to explore it is not like that everything there is time bound nobody is telling you 24 hours you go and sit and there's only chan- chants and mantras and only that is going on it's not like that they have a time for everything and everything is time bound they follow that so from this only learning is you don't have to put in a lot of eff- extra efforts that is being done you do everything at the right time like you take the best example of rama we are looking at rama every day in the morning he used to get up at brahma murta he did his sandhya he did his japa he did his nitya anushthana he prayed his Uh, pray to Vishwamitra and then he started his daily his responsibilities that were there killing of Tataka, Maricha and so on so everyone out of all these examples now looking at Ramayana only with the perspective of story is not enough what learning we get out of that is important so today when we complain saying that how can I do something I don't have the time nobody says that you have to take a lot of your time but everything can be time bound you do it even for one minute or you do it for one hour doesn't matter what matters is you actually do it properly that is there So nobody can complain saying that I don't have time. 24 hours is the only time which you had, your grandfather had, your grandson also is having the same thing, is going to have the same thing. So we cannot complain. How we make use of those 24 hours is very, very important. So here the importance of Japa has been told. Further, Rama prays homage to Vishwamitra and then further they move about again. Importance of daily rituals, it continues. Prabhata yam to sharvar yam krita paur vani. ஒரு <laughs> Bhagavatam comes in. Kalpana ji, the Yagna Valkya from the Sai Sat Charitam is different. It's got nothing to do here. So this Yagna Valkya is a Rishi. Mainly he was the one who was responsible for the Taitiriya Upanishad and mainly for Yajur Veda. He was Rishi of Yajur Veda. So he says, Brahmano Pasyade Sandhya Vishnu Nashankare Nacha Kasmano Pasyade Vim Shayaskamo Dijatamaha This Sandhya Vandana when we feel proud that i am doing it don't feel proud brahma vishnu shankara are also doing it brahmano pasyate sandhya vishnu na shankare na cha kasmano pasaye devi who is not worshiping sandhya devi shayas kamo dvijattamaha dvijah twice born that is those who are having the yagnopavita if you do this that is for your benefit shreya it is going to give you shreya manusmriti also you have this உத்தாயாவசியம் கிருத்தவாசியம் ஜபம் திஷ்டேம் சாபரம் சிரம் ரிஷயோ தீர்கம் சந்தியா தீர்கமாயுரவாயு பிரஜாமிஷ்டீர்த்தீர்த்தீர்ச்சமேவிளசிஸ்யூ வி தீர்காயு அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ரிஷீஸ் ஆல்சோ வில் ஆல்வேஸ் பிளஸ் யூ ஸோ மெந்தி பிரஜாசக்தி இன்க்ரீசஸ் you will have fame success yesha wherever you go prajna shakti obviously when you chant the gayatri japa it has to be full of concentration and focus automatically mental strength and intellect will increase now there might be a few people who says that no i did in my childhood when the yagna bhavitam was done i did my sandhya vandana but then the practice left out if the practice has left out there is no time why are you waiting for you can start from today also but so there can be a few senior people also right who say i have the yagna bhavitam but then i am not doing the sandhya vandana yagna upavitam is for brahmins kshatriyas and vaishyas also so note this though the shudra communities they don't have the practice of upanayanam they do have the practice of japa and so on they can also do japa chant mantras and so on so just having only having the yagna upavitam thread that is there just wearing that it's not an ornament or a show off right women also we also don't have the yagna upavitam apart from that also you can do the japa that is there but the those who are having the yagna bhavitam you must never skip your nitya anushthanam rama did that he belonged to a kshatriya kula krishna did that he belonged to a yadava kula everyone has done that we must also do that so the importance of nitya karma has been mentioned here so when something has been told so much in detail this itself should uh, open our eyes and say that how far or how it is important people around are doing their nitya anushthana nitya karma we people make fun of them saying that why are you doing this you don't have anything else to do it's not at all like that importance is there those who know they know about it. further 
now little has been told about vedic living now why all this has been included here main purpose is when rama and lakshmana they spend their time with vishwamitra vishwamitra not only taught them or not only took them just to kill demons he taught them a lot how at their right age when after going to the gurukula they had returned back at the right age that is about the, you can say now uh, krishna uh, rama would be roughly around 10 or 11 years old so this is a right time when the boys were to be groomed so vishwamitra gave them the right principles he taught them the right things in life and he says that through stages three stages in a person's life karma kanda upasana kanda jnana kanda how you can relate it to your life now don't think all this is just mere philosophy this is the same thing that we are doing till date so <laughs> we need not feel surprised looking at all this oh purity of mind i don't know whether my mind is pure upasana kanda single mindedness i cannot do all this jnana kanda realization of oneself all this is philosophy when will i enjoy life it is not like that this is what we are doing karma kanda all of us go to school do some karma do some action you put in effort so that you gain some knowledge this is karma next is upasana whatever you learn in school you practice that later right so maybe i learned english in school now i am practicing that that's the reason i can speak in english or i learned some basic principles in school how to eat how to sit how to walk how to talk same thing i'm doing upasana now same thing i'm practicing it now last is jnana now i know to speak in english i'm just giving you an example i am also speaking that i'm also doing that but then i feel that i have to gain more knowledge so therefore what i do i read more i go i delve deep into that i take more knowledge i gain more jnana jnana kanda this is how a person evolves karma kanda upasana kanda jnana kanda Gita is also based on the same principles. Karma, Jnana, Bhakti. Why Karma Yoga is third chapter? Why Jnana Yoga comes later? Why Bhakti Yoga is a twelfth chapter? Does anyone know? Or it is just Krishna felt and he wrote it? Anyone can guess? Why Karma Karma Yoga is third chapter in the Gita? Then Jnana Yoga, then Bhakti Yoga. In fact, Bhakti is so easy. It should come first, right? If Bhakti Yoga was the first chapter, people like you and me will enjoy. We will follow that from day one. Bhakti Yoga, Krishna says, don't do anything, just be good human beings. That itself is Bhakti, I'll give you moksha. But no. Without Karma Yoga, Nana Yoga is incomplete. And Nana Yoga is not possible without Karma Yoga. Okay. So he says, for doing Karma Yoga, Karma is impossible. Nana Yoga is impossible without Karma Yoga. What else? You have to do your duty first and then. Okay. What else? The questions asked by Arjuna is leading to the way Krishna tells. Okay. Everyone is giving very scholarly answers. Everyone can follow. Everyone can follow Karma Kanda. So it is first. Okay. It's easy to understand. There is just practice. Okay. Arjuna, I told you that uh, actually that uh, when Arjuna had asked about this, hmm. mainly you do your karma, don't expect any result or don't uh, hmm. uh, like uh, see the other thing, like you are fighting in front of your own uh, hmm. guru or your relatives, but you do your karma. Karma, okay. So that is what, that is what it is there. Okay. Nalini Ji, what are you saying? Uh, Arjuna himself was confused. He didn't know seeing his relations in the friend. Hmm. That confused state of mind. Yes, okay. All of you gave scholarly answers. I will give you a simple explanation what I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now why Karma Kanda? Why Jnana Yoga? Why Bhakti Yoga? What all of you said is right. First, we have to do our karma. Then, Jnana, you get proper knowledge, and then it is Bhakti. Right? Very simple act. Everyday action. All of us, what we do is how to eat food. Right. Firstly, what is being told, whenever a child is born, a plate of food is kept in front of the child and firstly, initially the child, the mother maybe feeds the child. After that, what does the child do? It sees all around. Okay, this is a plate, in that there is food. My mother, she is keeping her hand on the food, she is putting it inside her mouth. He sees this, he sees a father doing that, the child sees people around doing this. What he does, the child also has a plate food, takes it in his hand, puts it in the mouth. At this time, so he is doing karma action. At this time, the mother doesn't say that take your hands, wash your hands, with, with your hand you pick up the food, put it inside your mouth. 
she doesn't speak anything no all of your mothers or parents here most of you or those who are children also you would have nobody remembers our mothers telling that this is a plate in front of you this is food here or when our say for example one more simple example brushing one's teeth how do you sit and give a lecture to your child saying that this is a brush this is a toothpaste you have to put the toothpaste on the brush you brush it like this brush it like that no directly karma is done right initially the mother will help the child in brushing the teeth from the next day onwards or after a few days the child brushes its teeth by itself at that time nobody is teaching the child nobody is giving jnanam to the child only karma child sees others and it follows it doesn't know how it does it what it does it doesn't know karma next stage maybe at the age of 5 or 6 the child starts going to school at that time it learns so oh, i have to brush my teeth every day that is the reason i'm brushing i'm doing this action for the last 6 years now i know why i'm doing it jnanam maybe germs in my mouth are killed or i take a bath every day or this is how i have to eat food in order to fill my stomach because i feel hungry so to live alive i have to eat food so all the simple things he is doing all this action right from the day the child is born till the age of 5 or 6 till the child goes to school karma is already being done he is brushing his teeth is having his food is taking a bath everything but till the child doesn't know an answer why he is doing all this but he is doing that at the age of 5 or 6 gnanam comes in knowledge comes in Okay, why I am doing this? Now he has got an answer. Oh, now I get an answer. Why I am doing something for the last so many years? Then later, maybe at the age of ten or twelve, when still studies are a bit high, at that time then a new concept comes in: brush your teeth not once, brush your teeth twice. Why should I brush my teeth twice? And then you have brush your teeth like this, up and down. This you show see so many ads, right? How they show with the toothpaste ads and so many things. Or even food also. Later. basic concept we know food is there to fill our stomach food helps us in living and so on to keep our ourselves alive as we gain further knowledge what we do is then you no know, the, you have this food it will be healthy you have some carbohydrate it will be healthy you have some protein it is healthy vitamin is healthy but fat is not healthy so all this more knowledge you are gaining gnanam is already done you know why you are doing this is bhakti bhakti is where devotedly we try to follow some karma we are already knowing do, doing we do all kinds of actions we are already eating food right from the time we are born you don't know why you are eating at the, in the middle stage you get an answer why you are eating that is you get gnanam later in stage what you do is you are very much open now and you decide okay i am eating food i know why i am eating food but am i eating the right food am i doing the right things there we put in more efforts we do things devotedly there we realize and we understand what is actually right that is where bhakti so whatever you said all of you said the answer that's all correct but why karma jnana and bhakti or in this case why karma upasana and jnana has been mentioned in this order very much relatable to our own lives how we do so whenever you give some examples also related to your own life right of course philosophies are one part but then why krishna has told this or why even in the karma kanda in the principles of vedic living that i have been told here why this three have been mentioned karma upasana jnana this is how a human being lives in his life only now all of us also we are doing the same thing right but when i give you this example at that time maybe it strikes you oh yeah i was also doing the same thing without knowing why i am brushing my teeth i was brushing for the first 4 5 years then when I, when i went to school i got the answer that oh i am brushing my teeth later i got the jnana and then now maybe after a few years i realized no this is not the way of brushing at all this is not the right way there are other ways in which my teeth should be brushed properly right so this is bhakti bhakti in a sense proper knowledge or right, now i'm doing it nicely excellent knowledge there is nothing beyond this so this is a reason why in this order things have been put in ha lakshman ji you want to say something no i appreciate it and the only thing is your father also said that how to learn the language he hmm. first to speak then Correct. to learn the grammar उंट <laughs> saying that why i did this was it correct was it wrong then we analyze it so that anal- analysis that we do that is bhakti or that is actually jnana kanda it comes towards the end that is realization so why i gave you a very simple example which we can relate to our everyday lives is whenever you study something philosophy 
or even Bhajar Govindam or texts like this of even Adi Shankaracharya. Studying philosophy is one part, but then now if uh, the slide that I'm showing you, if someone who doesn't know anything, now all of us at least little we have a basic knowledge of everything around, you know what is Ramayana, you know what is Vedic living, you know what are the different Kandas, you are familiar with the Gita. So there if we talk about philosophically or such definitions if you give it is fine. But for a person who doesn't know anything and you go and tell them, no, you know what is Karma Kanda? Purity of mind. You know what is Upasana Kanda? Single pointedness. So all this definition if you go and read, they will say you are also mad, what you are saying is also mad, I am not understanding anything, all this is just false, let me enjoy my life and lead, be happy. This is where we make mistakes. So whenever we give some examples and we must relate, all this has been related, all this has been mentioned because it is very much relatable to our lives. So as beginners in this stage now, including myself, we are all just beginners, we don't know much, right? So therefore giving the examples and always comparing and relating with our own lives is important. This is one thing for easy understanding. Secondly, when we give easy examples or something which is very relatable to our own life still date, at that time it also makes sense that whatever Krishna mentioned thousands of years back or whatever has been mentioned in the Ramayana or whatever centuries ago were told in the Vedas, that makes sense even now. Why it is mentioned Karma Kanda, Upasana Kanda, Jnana Kanda. If you sit and wonder through the example that I gave you, Oh, I am also doing the same thing, right? So it is so amazing. Whatever was mentioned in the Vedas centuries ago, till date it is making the same sense. When we give such examples, you can relate to this. And at this time, the thought comes in that our scriptures are so strong. Whatever is mentioned in our scriptures is so strong that till date we are believing that. So of course, there are so many changes that come in, so many modern technology, this, that comes in. Obviously, all that is there. But our roots are something which is not that... 50 years back it made sense, today it doesn't make sense. It's not like that. Centuries ago it was making sense, today also it's making sense, future also it will make sense. So again continuing, and there are a few principles that have been told. Now all this Vishwamitra is telling Rama, that's the reason it is included here, mainly sacrifices. Now in the Treta Yuga, now why so much of importance is given for Yajnas or sacrifices? Reason being in Treta Yuga, the means of reaching the Lord were through sacrifices only. Satya Yuga was through meditation. Treta Yuga, sacrifices. Dwapara Yuga, pujas. That is the reason you have the Govardhana Puja, Go Puja, and all people, Nanda, Yashoda, Krishna, they used to all do all such pujas. And of course, to some extent, even sacrifices like the Rajasuya sacrifice that Yudhishthira did and so on. But then, mainly it was rituals and pujas that were being done. What is the rule for Kali Yuga? Anyone can guess? Satya Yuga is done, Treta Yuga done, Dwapari Yuga done. Kali Yuga, what should be done? Nama. Nama Japa. Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Bhava Pranashanam. Last Shloka of Srimad Bhagavatam. But, so you see how the level of difficulty has reduced, right? Doing meditation, beyond imagination for us. Doing sacrifices, not possible. Doing a simple puja also, once a year, okay, let me see, I'll do a small Satya Narayana puja, that is also taking so much of efforts. For it. Least has been told in the Kali Yuga, chant the Nama. That too the Lord says in the Bhakti Yoga only of chapter 12, unconsciously also if you chant my Nama, I will give you moksha. We have live examples for that. <coughs> you have the story of Ajamala who named his last son as Narayana. A great robber or a person you can say having evil qualities. On his last days, he called out Narayana. The Lord considered that to be his name and gave him moksha. But for us, even chanting the names of the Lord also is a great difficulty. So then what not? It is our own ignorance that is there. Nothing else. So here, why so much of importance is mentioned in that, uh, why Vishwamitra tells Rama about sacrifices and so on. Like you can see on the screen, Yajnas, they were all offerings. Because in the Treta Yuga, the only way of pleasing the deities or to get the blessings of gods was through sacrifices. And that's the reason why all these sages used to do a lot of sacrifices and these demons used to come and attack and that's how Rama saved them ultimately. Panchamaha Yajnas, Ashwamedha Yajna, Rajasuvi Yajna, Putrakameshti Yajna and so on. These are all different. Yajnas mainly the primary deity was Agni. Next Sarga. Now, why Vishwamitra? Now, please wonder why these two or three slides were included talking about Nityanushtana Karma, sacrifices and so on. Because Vishwamitra has bought Rama and Lakshmana to save his sacrifice, the sacrifice that he was doing from demons. But now for a person like Rama, who is a small boy of about 10 or 11 years old, he doesn't know what exactly a sacrifice is. And he should not sit and wonder 
that why I am doing this? Why is the sacrifice so important? What if a sacrifice is disturbed? What if the demons come and attack? What will happen? Now, only a person who knows the importance of something will always stay and protect, right? So, Vishwamitra feels this need that I must first tell this Rama the importance of sacrifices, why I have bought him here, why, why what is the reason to bring him here to save the sacrifice from demons. Only if the importance is told, only then Rama will fight full of will, right? Best example from the Ramayana only I will tell you in the case of Hanuman. Hanuman has this feeling always that when Sita had lost, Sita had been abducted by Rama, Ravana, Rama is crying for her. And Hanuman used to always feel, though he never told that openly, he used to always feel that why this man is crying for a woman. It's okay, right? You have one wife is lost. Let uh, you marry another wife. It was uh, those times that many marriages were happening. One woman is gone, you marry another woman. In fact, Rama's uh, father, Dasharatha, also had many queens, right? So, Hanuman used to always have this feeling. So, why this feeling? And later when he actually went to Ashokavana and met Sita, at that time he knew that for Rama there is only one Sita and for Sita there is only one Rama, looking at their qualities. But then why this thought even came to the mind of Hanuman? He was not at fault. The reason being, he never had seen any other woman except his mother. He never knew the importance of a relationship because he had never seen any married people. Sugriva was his minister, he also was separated from his wife. So again, there also he never saw. He had spent some time with his mother Anjana Devi, that was in his childhood. So again, he had not witnessed the importance of any relationship. He himself was an Aishtika Brahmachari, he is an Aishtika Brahmachari. So he also has not experienced what is a woman, what is a wife and so on. So he never knew the importance of relationships. So that is the reason this thought used to come to his mind. But later, of course, when he actually went, met Sita, at that time he realizes. and. So Rama purposely, he, Rama knew this, that Hanuman has this feeling in his mind. Why, why this man is crying for Sita and why so much of efforts are being put in? Hanuman used to always feel. But then why Rama gave the ring only to Hanuman? He did, there was, now before he gave the ring to Hanuman, his ring to Hanuman to find out Sita, there was no guarantee which monkey will go and find out, right? Rama also did not know that Hanuman will find. It's just that Rama had faith and trust. And purposely he had given this ring to Hanuman because he wanted Hanuman to go and see Sita so that he knew the relationship of a woman. For that, and how did Hanuman know about this? How did he know the importance of Sita? And how this thought in his mind went away that, okay, this man is crying for this Sita, Rama is crying for Sita, it is fully worth. How he knew is that lady in Lanka, she was abducted by Ravana, who was, you can say, he was ruling over all the three worlds when the gods were under his control. He was very rich and even Ravana had given her the status of a queen. He had told Sita, you come and marry me, come and stay with me. In the case of Rama, Rama had been banished from his kingdom. He was thrown out. The lady was suffering. She was staying in the forest. In spite of all this, if he wanted, Sita could, if she wanted, Sita could have married Ravana and lived happily. For eight entire months, she waited for Rama without any sign of Rama, without any message of Rama. Still, she waited patiently. Still, she is sitting in Ashokavana only. She did not enter, even enter the palace of Ravana, she, she did not accept any royal treatment. When Ra Hanuman went and saw this, when he experienced this, he, when he was a witness to all this, when he sits on the top of the Shimshava tree and he sees this, then when he finally sings the Ramayana story, he goes and meets Sita, he has tears in his eyes. And he feels there, he makes a statement that, now I feel why this Rama is scribing for you. If, there were, if it was any other woman, she would have easily gone and stayed with someone else. You waited patiently without even 1% hope. Eight whole months, Sita did not have an answer at all. Sita did not even know where is Rama. If ever Rama would come, still she had that faith on that one Rama. So when Rama also has the same faith, when Rama is scribing for that one, why he is crying? Now Hanuman gets an answer that Rama is meant for Sita, Sita is also meant for Rama. So this is the reason why Sita can wait so much in spite of having all the luxuries and her husband is actually banished from the forest and so on. Still, she has not given up her Ekapati Vrata Dharma. That's the reason why Rama also does not give us Ekapatni Vrata Dharma. So, so, when does Hanuman realize this? Only when he actually experiences that. So, here also coming back, Vishwamitra, first he tells the importance of sacrifice so that Rama knows that what he does is correct. So, we also, whenever you wish to tell someone something, that is the reason why we had three or four sessions just for the introduction of the Ramayana, right? If I don't tell you the gist of Ramayana or why Ramayana is important, I think in the initial sessions I told you, right? Why studying the Ramayana is important? 
Had I told you? Yes. Yes, Lakshmi. Huh. Yes. Why did I tell that? There will be a few people, right? Uh, Ramayana is our history. We have to study. Why? But we should do something. Or when our our own children, our youngsters, they come and ask us why for something, we have answers for that. It's just that we don't know the answer. And because we don't know the answer, we show them away, saying that no, 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 you should not ask like this. God will come and poke your eye. We give them such answers. Our parents didn't tell us. That doesn't mean we must not tell others. There are answers for everything. So here, Vishwa and Vishwamitra is the main proof. He tells Rama. He first explains the importance of sacrifice. Why sacrifice is important? Why doing the nitya karma is important? He gives different references from the Manusprati and so on. What Yajna Valkya has said. All these references Vishwamitra explains to Rama, so that and also in the Treta Yuga, importance of sacrifices is there. Now Rama has known. Rama knows that. Oh, this is the importance of sacrifice. So that is the reason why I have to save the sacrifice. I should not. Uh, wait and see whether the demons are putting some you know, evil stuff i should save the sacrifice why vishwamitra is putting in so much of efforts why he has brought me along now rama has got a clear answer so now he will fight from his heart he will give us 100% so therefore telling before knowing doing something we must know the importance of things otherwise we will never do that right now now i'll give you a very easy example all of us now we don't play with money right you have some money in your bank account or you have in your, at your house also why do we keep it safely because we know that it is important right for our own belongings we keep it very nicely right whereas if it is of someone else we don't do that in our houses do we throw garbage here and there no we have a dustbin we put the garbage in the dustbin on the road side you go people put it so casually i'm not saying all of you do people put it so casually why my house is important but the road is not important the same road so this road does not belong to me why should i do that but the day one realizes that this entire world is important on the same road even i am going to walk if i put the garbage it is ultimately going to come inside my house also the smell is going to come inside my house i am also going to suffer from diseases this nobody thinks my house is there something belongs to me that is important so knowing the importance of things is very very important only if we consider things important only if we value things only if we know the value of things we can give our 100% therefore vishwamitra first explains the importance of sacrifices so that now rama is fully prepared he knows why he is doing something and he will give us 100% so now finally rama protects the yajna of vishwamitra by killing rakshasas now what vishwamitra tells adya pravrti shadratram rakshatau rakshatam raghava yuvam deeksham gato yesha munihi maunitvam cha gamishyati now they say that to both the sons of dashrata Rama and Lakshmana, they say, for six continuous nights, you have to protect this, and all the sages they will be into mauna, mauna vratam, silence. Tau tu tad vachanam shutva raja bhutrau yashasvina anidrau shadaho ratram tapo vanamarakshata. Listening to this, all the sages, whatever the sages said, Rama and Lakshmana prepared themselves for six nights. They had to protect the sacrifice because usually now nisha chadaha. Nisham charati iti nisha charaha, meaning the rakshasas nisha. At night time, their powers double and they are ready to fight at night time. Especially rakshasas, they will attack, du- attack during the night time. So therefore, they have to be more cautious. For six continuous nights, the, both the boys, they don't sleep. Now sleep is considered one of the shadripuhu. Nidra, first ripu, first enemy of man is nidra. Now, all of us, maybe for one night you cannot sleep. More than that, or... Maybe physically you don't sleep lying on the bed, but next day you'll feel dull, right? You'll go down to sleep and so on. In fact, those who take up the sannyasa diksha, even till date, for sannyasa diksha to be taken, you know what is the first pariksha that is done for establishing a shishya? First night of sannyasa, when a person decides that, okay, I'm going to give sannyasa, that person is told that for an entire night you should be awake. That is the first test. The person is awake, then only sannyasa can be given. Because... Now why this is done is they have some pujas like the Mahashivratri puja and so on. But in many places they have to be awake at times. Awake is you have to be always alert. Therefore the first test for a sannyasi. This is practiced uh, I think even in the Shringeri Parampara, Shringeri Acharyas. Recent Acharya, Vidyashekra uh, Bharati, Shankaracharya. He, when he was given the Shishya Svikara in the year 2015, he had also practiced this. Bharati Tirtha had told his disciple that one night you have to be awake. 
like this in many acharyas many systems shringeri acharya is a recent acharya recent tradition which was followed which i came across and which i know so that i am sharing but in usually all the traditions whenever you give up sanyasa take sanyasa also first step is you have to be awake for the whole night now here it doesn't mean like people for us correct akhand ramana and so on correct now here it doesn't mean that okay i sleep anyway at night one or two but in the morning i get up at 10 this is not sanyasa this is not being awake at all what we do being awake that is also important no i just lie down in the bed i watch some movie i do some while away my time on the phone that is not being away you are doing something like he said i chant the ramayana or doing something product productive that is very very important so here these two boys also at the age of 10 or 11 they practice this they were awake for the entire night so then as per the instructions of vishwamitra they remained awake okay so today time is up we will stop here we'll continue in the next time so rama and lakshmana are now they are ready to face the rakshasas who are coming to attack the sacrifices